Welcome to Planet Algo. First things first, we are changing the name of Planet Algo to Cooley Labs. Why is this? Well, because I feel weird doing reviews of other blockchains if I'm named, if I have Algo in my name. So I decided to just make a simple name change, Cooley Labs. Uh, I didn't want to go too crazy with anything, so there we go. And it looks like I'm not the only one making a name change. The official Algorand wallet has been rebranded in the past few months to Paralgo. And today I'm going to do a quick review of Paralgo. This is not going to be a how-to. This is going to be a review of what's new, what's not, what I like, and what I don't. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at Paralgo and the name. Do I like it? Yes, I think that's a good name. The official Algorand wallet was much too long of a name. Paralgo is much easier to say. The icon. Eh, I don't know. It doesn't look too bad. It could be better. Well, I don't know. It's an icon. Who cares? So we click on it. Nice little landing screen there, a little transition. Bright, catches my eye. First screen first. I love this. Minimalist design. I absolutely love it. Okay, everything's very clean. I like that. Personally, I, I like this. Some people don't like this, uh, but I do. You can see I have the dark theme on. It's automatically mirroring. Uh, my 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 phone's theme i like that um, i think this looks very clean is there any new functionality on this no and that's going to be a common theme if you have done my other tutorial videos on the official algorithm wallet then you will be able to use 95 percent of this app they didn't really add any new additional functionality i will cover a few things that they did add however it's very minor and what they just did is they polished this thing and I think they did a great job of it. But there are a couple of annoyances, and we'll go over those. One of the things I liked is that they added the graph over here. Before, they had this shoved on to the first page. Now it has its own page. Now, if they keep it just like this, then I will say this is a bad move. But I can't imagine that they're going to give this an entire new tab to itself and just keep it with only this basic functionality. And thank the Lord that Algorand has finally started to move. It has been a rough, rough couple months. Sorry, just had to throw that out there. I think that they're going to be improving this page. If they don't, this is a bad move, but I can't imagine why they would add a new tab, put it on here, and not have it like that. The middle, the familiar send receive, this is exactly the same. Send receive. If I send, I got to select the account I'm going to send from. If I receive, it's just going to go ahead. I got to select the account. It's just going to show a QR code. Very easy. Exactly the same as before. And when I say exactly the same, there might be some new stuff. Uh, when I say exactly the same, what I mean is like basically the same functionality. So when I do this, I believe this is almost exactly the same. But in this app, they have added a lot of new information. So what I mean by that is this app is really focused on beginners. They're trying to get people into the Algorand system, which is what we want them to do, right? Because that will drive the price up makes it more valuable. So they have a lot of little info icons around. So I don't want to consider that new functionality, but be aware if I say something's exactly the same, it might have an I there for info. Contacts, exactly the same. This setting section, uh, besides looking much, I think, nicer, cleaner, it's exactly the same. They have your developer settings, your privacy policy, the rating, the theme, currency, all this stuff. None of it's changed as far as I can tell. Uh, we come over here, we come to this functionality for the plus up in the upper right hand corner. And this is one of my annoyances. So in this screen where before they had it compacted, I, this first screen used to be the next two screens. So uh, welcome to Peril Wallet. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I already have an account. Recover an account parallel ledger device. If I remember correctly, this was one screen before. And not only that, but this, they added this, right? Parallel ledger, or sorry, recover an account, recover an Algorand account. They added this warning screen here where it kind of goes through. So remember I said they're really making this for beginners. So they're adding a lot of these information screens. And this is something where I can understand why they have this, but I would really love a checkbox that says, I understand, never show this to me again. Instead, I have to click on it. 
So this turns what should be a three or four step process into now, if I want to scan a QR code, you can see the little learn more down here. That's what I was talking about with the eye. They've added a lot of those, which I think is great. And the reason I think these are great is because if I want to, I can click on it. I don't have to. So it's there for someone who needs it. It's not there for me who doesn't need it. So I can scan the QR code if I want, but because they added this and they don't remove the ability for me to see this again, as an extra step and they added an extra step here when it used to be just under here, right? They had it as one line item here, one line item here. So now what was, you know, before a three step process becomes a five step process. And that's a little annoying, okay? I, I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to bring the new person that isn't tech savvy into the ecosystem, which is what we want. But to me as a tech savvy, uh, already been in the ecosystem person, this is annoying, okay? Pair with Ledger, right here, go through it, just walks you basically through it. Whenever you want to hit the info, it takes you to your info screen. And you can come to a how does it work. This is new, by the way. This is definitely new. They have a lot more information. So they've added a ton more hand-holding in this app, which is great. I don't consider that new functionality, though. I just consider that hand-holding. So the functionality is basically the same. Up here is my notifications, all my notifications that ever were, all here is blockchain driven, is basically decentralized, which makes me wonder how much of this app is decentralized. Is the entire app decentralized? So I know like, you know, the app itself has to be downloaded from servers, so they have to have some kind of centralized server for that, but I wonder if the entire functionality of this app is decentralized. On this main home screen, you can see I have asset holdings and there is actually a dollar value. This is great. This is because of Tiny Man. So the assets I do have, I do have some assets. They are just assets with no value. I made some planet algorithms myself. I made a video on that on how to create an asset. They're just basic uh, fun tokens, I would call them. I wouldn't even call them a utility token. They're just for fun. They're not, they have no value. So Tiny Man says, hey, has no value. But if they had value, Tiny Man would toll it over there. I have my accounts down here. Uh, when you come into an account, new interface, I love how this looks. I think it looks much better than it did before. Love the clean interface. Assets, NFTs, histories, NFTs, what's that? Oh, it's brand new. NFTs will be coming soon. This is a must. MetaMask has it. Soulflare has it. Algorand absolutely needs it. So this is a must. On the asset screen, you can see here I have my assets, uh, Algo, Planet Algos, right? An NFT is it technically an asset, but it's a specific type of asset. So it's a sub, it's kind of a subsection of asset, right? Or a subgrouping. So it gets its own thing. NFTs are an asset, but it's an asset that is uh, only one of, and it's, you know, well, technically you can make fractional parts of it, but there's only one of it, technically. So you could say, you could fractionalize this, you could say there's multiple of it, but it's kind of different. I have videos that cover that. Over here, we have our functionality that we've always had, copy address, view passphrase. This is all exactly the same. Nothing different here. I have videos that cover all of that. Sending, this is to me annoying, but I understand again why they did it. I'm gonna send some algo, 0.0001. Uh, I can add a note here. I can send the max. I might get send the max. I'm going to send it to receiver. And I click send algo. You might say, what's annoying about that? Well, first of all, it brings me to this screen. Why does it bring me to the home section of my wallet? I feel like it should bring me here. Why should it bring me here? Because I want to confirm my transaction response. Right? There it is. Um, the other thing is I don't like all the stuff. This used to be one screen before, now it's three. And so again, for a tech savvy uh, guy that's familiar with this app, that's an annoyance to me that I have to go through, have all these extra clicks. And you might say, boy, this is really nitpicky. And it is, but I'm just telling you my opinion. And again, I understand why they did it. So even though it's an annoyance for me and I personally don't like it, I have to say that I welcome it because I got to admit it will be easier for people. Now myself, I thought the previous screen was fine. I thought having those three screens on one was absolutely fine, but I could see that being too much for somebody. 
Um, I've been in, you know, involved with technology a lot. I know people who aren't familiar with it. They would struggle with having too much information on one screen. So I get why they did that, and I guess I welcome it. I do wish that somehow they could cater to both crowds and have something a little more, uh, you know, maybe an option to have it in one screen or something. But anyways, they're just getting started. One thing I really like is right here. I, this is basically a transaction detail, pretty much the same. You can now open it directly in Algo Explorer or Goal Seeker. Before we had to copy this address, take it out of the app and put it into there. Now I can do it directly from there. Very nice. Okay, I got, you know, this is the basic thing. This is all very basic, right? You can send my plan to Algo somebody. That's, that's it, right? This is the app in a nutshell. They have went through... They have really added a ton of information. They've added a lot of hand-holding. The only new functionality which hasn't even been enabled yet is the NFT section. So I guess, I mean, if I think about it, really, there's, a, there's nothing new in this app. But yeah, I think this is a much better app. I like how it looks. I like the, uh, uh, how things are kind of arranged. I've told you what I dislike. I dislike some of the parts where they're walking you through some of the, the uh, functionality, right? So some of the things that I want to do, right? I want to import, you know, here I have it and I'm going through basically the structure of the app and I love that. But then when it's like, hey, I want to do X, it's like, okay, we're gonna take you through X. First, you know, do you have this? Second, do you, you know, it's like, oh my gosh. I've done this a hundred times. I have all this. Just let me do it. But I know why they're doing that. So overall, of course, we all want, you know, more people in the ecosystem. We want more adoption. So I think these are great moves. I am very happy with this wallet. Even though I would say that you could watch my other videos on tutorials and use this wallet 95 to 99% of it, be absolutely fine with it. I will release new uh, Paralgo tutorials. Remember, I've changed my names to Cooley Labs now. I will be covering Soulflare. I've been using Soulflare, familiarizing myself with it. I think I'm ready now to go ahead, and I'm going to do a general review like this one first, and then I will do some tutorials on Soulflare. Uh, Soulflare is, I like it. Uh, I like it better than this wallet, I'll be honest with you. It has a very nice widget on Android, at least. I guess I'll have to try it on my iPad to see if it has it. It has a very nice NFT viewer on Android. Um, there's some things I don't like about it, but most of the things I don't like about it are things that are related to the Solana network and not Soulflare itself. Uh, you know, Algorand, I believe, just as a network, it has some things that are uh, ahead of Solana. I don't want to make a comparison here. But let's just say that some of the dislikes I have about Soulflare, which I'll cover, are really kind of related to the network itself and not to the functionality of the wallet. Because the wallet has to operate like that because of the network. And they're very minor things. If you watch those videos, you'll probably be like, oh man, nitpicking again. But I want to do that because I'm becoming very familiar with these wallets. So I'll go ahead and I'll po point out the nuances of them. So that'll be my next video, Soulflare Review. Yeah, you should see it in the next couple of days. Again, Cooley Labs, so don't be uh, wondering, what is this? You know, how did YouTube do this, right? It's just me. I changed the name of the channel. I'm going to be changing it. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all I got today. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe down below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and I will try to get to them. Otherwise, thank you all very much, and have a great day.